Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter and today we're looking at three different ways to get macro shots for under 20 bucks. Now the three methods we're going to be going over do require you to have a lens. It can be an old vintage lens or really anything. So let's go ahead and jump in and talk about the three different items you can use under 20 bucks to get really nice macro shots. The first of our macro options involves a very strange adapter. The lens reverse adapter costs only $10 and effectively reverses your lens. To get the right adapter, you simply find the filter thread size on the front of your lens, purchase the adapter with that size, and thread it under the front of your lens. With the adapter installed, the back of your lens becomes the front. For each of these macro methods, I'm using the exact same zoom lens at 70 millimeters so we can compare the differences. So here is a shot with the 70 millimeter lens at 70 millimeters at its minimum focus distance. So at 70 millimeters, this is as close as I can get to this camera and lens. With the reverse adapter, I was able to get this shot. And I noticed it was much darker than the other methods for getting macro shots. So my guess is that smaller rear element of the lens was causing things to get a little dark. So that's something to keep in mind. Otherwise, image quality looks really great. There's really no color shifting, and I didn't notice any other artifacts creeping in. So the pros of this adapter is it's very cheap at under $10. It really doesn't take up any room, so you could just kind of keep it hidden in your bag. If you ever wanted to do macro, you could just pull it out. And it's pretty easy to use. You just throw it under the front of your lens and switch the lens around. There's two cons with this particular adapter. The first thing and the biggest one is that it exposes the rear element of your lens to potential damage and you don't want a bunch of dust collecting on that since that's usually what's right up next to your sensor the second con is the loss of light since there's that smaller opening at the rear of the lens you might experience some light loss depending on the lens you're using the second budget macro option involves using close-up filters these are simply glass filters that you attach to the front of your lens and offer several benefits. You can buy a set of these filters for $10 to $20 depending on the size of your front element. In my case, I purchased a set of 77 millimeter filters. That kit that I purchased came with four filters, a plus one, plus two, plus four, and plus 10 strength filters. Do keep in mind, depending on the filter, you cannot stack them together because the front kind of bows out. And you wouldn't want to scratch those elements of glass together. The beauty with this system is we can control very easily how much of a macro effect we're going to be getting. Here again is our control image at 70 millimeters minimum focus distance. And I'll start going through the various strengths, starting with the plus one, then the plus two, as well as the plus four and finally the plus 10. One of my favorite things about this particular method of getting macro shots is how easy it is. If you're taking some shots, you just thread one of these onto the front of your lens and you're able to go ahead and take some shots and remove it quickly. So the pros of this adapter, the biggest one is ease of use. You just throw it on the front of your lens and you're good to go. You also have four different strengths of macro effect that you can essentially attach directly onto your lens. And this means that you can do some extreme macro or if you just want to get a couple feet closer to your subject, uh, you can attach a small, maybe plus one or two to the front of your lens and uh, achieve that. Another pro is it really doesn't add that much to your setup when it comes to weight, which is great. And the final pro is you don't have to remove your lens to use it. You just leave your lens on the camera and add and remove the filters at will. The only con to this system that I have found is the lower image quality compared to the other options. And at the end, we'll compare them all together but you will notice a slight, very slight reduction in sharpness and a couple other little things. Considering each of these adapters on their own are roughly five bucks, I think this is pretty incredible. You could spend maybe a little more and get a nicer copy of these uh, filters, but that's something to keep in mind. They won't have the same image quality of the other two options. Our final macro option involves something called macro extension tubes. These are really popular and these tubes can be had for almost any mount and they go between your camera and lens. The tube is made up of two different lens mounts, one on either end, one being a male to connect to your camera and the other being a female to add your lens to. And then in between those two lens mounts, there are several pieces of different sizes that you can use together or use separately to decrease or increase 
the macro effect. Rather than essentially magnifying the lens, these macro tubes move your lens away from the sensor. This makes focusing to infinity impossible, but it does give you great macro capabilities. I personally bought the Canon EOS macro tube set on Amazon for just under $15. Now the tubes I bought have no electronics, so you won't be able to use autofocus or change your aperture. That said, you can purchase electronic models if you need that functionality. After purchasing the tubes for this video, I actually found an electronic version for only 20 bucks, and I'll include that and in all the gear we talked about in this video in the description below. After taking a look at the image quality on this, I found it to be hands down the best. For the macro tubes, the pros go something like this. We have the best image quality since there is no additional glass. Uh, another pro is there's customizable strengths. You can remove or add those sections in between the two ends of the macro tube to increase or decrease your minimum focus distance. There are a couple cons though. The first is it's a more bulky setup. You got this big tube. It's about the size of a lens that you're gonna have to store in your bag and the second con is that the macro tubes are very time consuming because they go in between your lens and the camera it can be kind of fiddly to switch over to macro mode and if you're going to be changing those rings in the middle of the tube uh, that just takes time so now that we looked at all three which is best and why if we're strictly talking about image quality the macro tubes come in first place in second place we have the reverse adapter and in last place we have the close-up filters since these filters add a glass element you will notice a few artifacts. These artifacts are very minimal for such a cheap piece of glass, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. And just because the macro tubes came in first place for quality doesn't mean I would recommend them exclusively. I really enjoyed using the close-up filters because of their ease of use. You can just pop them on the front of your lens for a quick macro shot and remove them quickly. With the macro tubes, I found I wouldn't take macro shots as much because I had to turn off the camera, take the lens off, get the macro tubes out, put them in between the two, turn everything back on, and if I had to change the macro strength, it just even took that much more time. So I found I would just keep clicking away without switching over to macro. So even though the close-up filters aren't as good quality, the fact that I use them more and was able to get macro shots at all just goes to prove that it might be a better option depending on how you shoot and what your workflow is. And finally, I probably wouldn't recommend the reverse adapter. It's a cool idea, but I don't like my rear elements, well, exposed to the elements. That said, the reverse adapter is the cheapest option, and it really doesn't take up any space. So if you're only gonna buy one of these, just for kicks and you might not use it that often, it might not hurt to get one of these and just keep it tucked away in a small pouch in your camera bag just in case you ever want to do some macro. One last note on shooting macro. I did all of these tests on a 70 millimeter lens, but using wider lenses often gives you more extreme results. For example, here is a 70 millimeter lens with the macro tubes, and here is a 50 millimeter lens with those same macro tubes. I even tried a 35 millimeter lens, but I had to get within a millimeter to get focus at that distance, and the lens was actually blocking all of my light, so I had to back off to 50 millimeter again. So experiment with different focal lengths to see what you can get away with, and keep in mind all of this is going to change depending on what camera sensor you're using, what lens you're using, the type of lens you're using, and all that good stuff, but you should be safe to go on pretty much anything. So there you have it, three different ways to get macro shots. You can find each of the methods or parts in the description below. I'd love to hear from you if you have any ideas or tips for shooting macro to help me and other shooters out because that's always appreciated. And if you enjoy this video and want to get more like it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe even the bell notification button if you'd like to get this stuff pinged over to you as quickly as possible. That's going to do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.